Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It is Class of Friday time again when we look at a G.I. Joe Classified Series figure every Friday. And we are looking at another Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie figure, the last of the movie figures. And to be honest, I've just wanted to get these out of the way. So we are looking at Scarlet. For the most part, I've liked these movie figures more than I've liked the movie, but they've still been kind of lackluster. So let's see if this one is any better. Looking at the box, we have the window pane showing the figure and a single single accessory, the Arasha Kage Ninja hexagram in the background. We have the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie logo, the G.I. Joe Classified series logo, and the name Scarlet. We've got some box art on the front and on the side, and this is meant to look like the movie, and I like this art style. I like this semi-realistic painted style. I kind of wish we had this style of art on all the boxes. Scarlet is number 20 in the Classified series. We have a movie poster on the back, and on this side we have the symbols which represent her specialties. This one is syringe key. This one means she doesn't really know which way she's going. This one means she couldn't reach something on the top shelf with her hand, so she's trying it with her foot. And this means empty recycle bin. Let's take Movie Scarlet out of the box and take a look at the figure. Here is Movie Scarlet out of the box, and this figure is obviously inspired by Scarlet from 1982. There are some nods to the colors from the original figure, and of course the red hair and the crossbow. Other than that, this movie figure is entirely reimagined. This isn't the first classified Scarlet figure we've had. We had one very early in the line, and that first six-inch Scarlet figure was much closer to the vintage original. Comparing apples to apples, even though these figures represent the same character, they don't seem to share any parts, even though they could have shared a few parts and nobody would have noticed. Obviously, they can't use the same head because the movie figure is meant to look like the actress. Let's Let's take a look at Scarlet's accessory. That won't take long. She comes with only one. She has this crossbow. It is in black plastic. It's a good looking crossbow. It is loaded with a single bolt. This is a unique accessory. It is not a copy of the other figure's crossbow. And this is an important accessory because the 1982 Scarlet figure came with only one accessory and it was a crossbow. Okay, so you're giving Scarlet only one accessory and it is a crossbow. That seems logical and these movie figures tended to come with fewer accessories than other classified figures but for this figure to only come with this one accessory is a problem for two reasons. Reason number one, she only has one shot. There are no other bolts anywhere on this uniform or on the equipment. The other Scarlet figure included this backpack with extra bolts. Reason number two is this detail on the belt piece, which at first I thought might be a holder for extra bolts for the crossbow, but upon further inspection, it doesn't really look like that. It almost looks like an empty pistol holster. So if the figure is not going to come with a pistol, then it should not have a non-functioning holster. That would be acceptable for figures of a smaller scale, but it's not really acceptable at this scale. Let's take a look at Scarlet's articulation, and she had the female classified figure articulation, which is pretty good, but a little bit more limited than the male figures. The head has really good articulation with the ball joints, so you can move the head in any position you want. That works great. She has butterfly joints at the shoulder. She can swing her arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. She has swivels at the elbow and she has single jointed elbows. This has been improved on more recent figures. She has swivels at the wrists and she has up and down hinges on both wrists. She has a ball and socket joint at the rib cage, which is artfully disguised by this chest armor piece. So she has an ab crunch and a swivel at the chest. There's another ball and socket joint at the waist, so she can swivel and move at the waist as well. She has has a leg split. Her legs can move forward pretty well. Back, not quite as much. She has a twist at the thigh cut. She has double jointed knees. She has a twist at the boot cut. And she has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Movie Scarlet. And really, it's not too bad. There are some yellowish tan highlights and some red. And I think
think those are subtle nods to the version 1 figure from 1982, but the rest is totally different, and that's not a bad thing after all. We already got a classified Scarlet that was trying to do an update of that version 1 uniform. The head features red hair in a ponytail, really good detail on that hair wrap. The face is in the likeness of the actress Samara Weaving, and it looks really good. I like this face. It's amazing what they can do with actor likenesses on action figures these days. Overall, the uniform is brown, so Scarlet has a more earthy color palette than the Ninjas or Cobra, and I don't think that's a bad choice. It's a bit refreshing in this very limited movie line. The chest features a brown armor piece over a brown and black textured uniform with some of that yellowish tan on the front and the back, and there is a gray digital camouflage pattern on the chest piece. I like this a lot. This is more paintwork than we got on the other movie figures. Her arms feature brown sleeves with patches of tan on the right shoulder and the right and left forearms and a patch of red on the left shoulder. She has textured black at the elbows and black and brown and tan forearm armor and brown gloves. Around her waist she has this belt piece with a bit of silver at the belt buckle and this part, which I'm interpreting as a pistol holster, I could be wrong. The figure needs this belt piece, it adds some depth and dimension to the details, and it adds a bit of black to break up all the brown. On her legs she has a brown textured uniform, and she has leg armor on her thighs in a slightly different color than the uniform. She has black straps around her thighs, and then she has this border over the top part of the leg armor. It looks like maybe that should have continued all the way around the leg armor pieces, but maybe that was a paint application that it got cut for cost. She has brown knee pads. Maybe black knee pads would have looked better, but the brown is okay. Then she has tall boots, which I thought were black, but are more like a dark gray. They are nicely detailed boots with some buckles and some lines on them. And then she has more of that digital camouflage, the gray digital camouflage paint spray that matches what's on the chest. And I'm a big fan of this. I really like this camouflage pattern. Just looking at this figure on its own, this is a nice looking figure. The colors are really well balanced and the colors work really well together. Brown is a little different for Scarlet, but it works. This is probably the best of the movie figures. One of the reasons I think it is one of the best is because more effort went into it than the other movie figures. I mean, look at this. We have paint sprays of multiple colors. We have a camouflage pattern. We have a lot of details picked out in paint, and we just didn't get enough of that on the other movie figures. Comparing the movie Scarlet figure with the 1982 figure, well, that 1982 figure always had some problems and never lived up to its potential, so that's not really a fair comparison. Standing it next to the earlier classified Scarlet figure, I think is a much more fair comparison, and other than the face sculpt, which I think looks really good on the movie figure, I think the first version of classified Scarlet is a superior figure in almost every way. The Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie figure is probably the best of all the movie figures, and it was the hardest one for me to find and the last one to review. But if the best of the movie figure still doesn't measure up to the main line of G.I. Joe classified figures, that's a problem for the movie series, and maybe a reason why so many of them are still on the shelves right now. That was my review of the G.I. Joe classified series Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie Scarlet figure. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm kind of happy to put the Snake Eyes movie to bed for a while. I'm ready to move on to other things, and we're going to do that next week. I review G.I. Joe classified series figures every Friday and vintage G.I. Joe toys every Sunday, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for all of that. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. If you'd like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. I could not continue to do this without the support of my friends on Patreon. You could get some special perks and get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more G.I. Joe classified and vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. Until then, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.